This Sunday is arguably the biggest day in racing. You have the F1 Monaco race, the Indy 500, and the NASCAR Coke 600 all in the same day. Now, no matter how you feel about each of those series, I think many of us can agree that NASCAR does have them beat in one arena, and that is paint schemes. Nothing quite like a NASCAR paint scheme. And on Memorial Day weekend, yeah, we got a theme going. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Midweek episode, but it's gonna be a fun one. I'm gonna spend most of this episode reacting to all of the announced Coke 600 patriotic paint schemes that we're gonna see this weekend, because there are some super awesome ones, and I thought it'd be fun to go through them, give you guys my little thoughts on them, and we can just react to them together. How about that? But before I do that, I do have a couple actually kind of somewhat big news stories to hit on first. First thing I want to note is that this Sunday is the official start of the eNASCAR Pro League. Race is at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, kind of between the Indy 500 and the Coke 600, so probably not a terrible way to spend your afternoon. This is the NASCAR Heat 3 League, where a bunch of top NASCAR teams, Joe Gibbs, Penske, Stuart Haas, etc., all uh, drafted PS4 and Xbox One players to be their NASCAR Heat representatives. It's nice to see NASCAR kind of dive into the esports arena a little bit more. They already, of course, have the iRacing series, which is a pretty big success, I think. Uh, but throwing in NASCAR Heat, which is another fun one as well, uh, kind of cool to see NASCAR expanding at least. Doesn't hurt anybody. And honestly, it's a great way, I think, to connect to younger fans, younger viewers who are more attuned to video games and live streams and stuff like that. Get their attention and then bring them over to major racing, big racing all around. I think it's a good move. But anyway, yeah, the first race of the season for that starts this Sunday. And now some other big, big breaking news this morning, as a matter of fact. We've heard for a long time now about how NASCAR has been trying to purchase ISC. They want more control over some of the racetracks on the schedule. Well, good, good news. Reported by several people, you can see right here, NASCAR and ISC, International Speedway Corporation, have agreed to merge. Obviously, as you can see in that report right there, still needs to be approved by some people, but this is a big step forward in a process that it's been a long time coming, long time being worked on. The transaction is valued at a whopping $2 billion, and as you saw in that tweet from Bob Pockris there, uh, good chance that this could be done by the end of this year, which means, remember, schedule change, contracts end after 2020, 2021. This will time out perfectly for NASCAR to make some major schedule changes in the near future. And I think that's the big takeaway here. If you're a fan who's been wanting NASCAR to make major changes to the schedule, you know, adding tracks, removing tracks, swapping dates and stuff like that, if you're one of those types of fans who've wanted those types of schedule changes, this is good news. Assuming this deal goes through and NASCAR then takes over ISC, who owns like half of the tracks NASCAR races on, this would give NASCAR more direct control over the racetracks and could more easily manipulate where they would line up on the schedule because the way things are now just in a high level sense. NASCAR says they want to change the schedule, they have to go to ISC and negotiate, and then they have to agree on something and kind of compromise. If this deal goes through, NASCAR really won't have to compromise nearly as much. If they want to run Kansas in July, they can. So this allows NASCAR to be a lot more flexible when it comes to making dramatic schedule changes in the not so distant future. And uh, so I think if you're a fan that's been wanting that type of thing, wanting more short tracks, wanting more road courses, wanting just something to liven up the schedule, this is good news for you. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see that this worked out and that we are, we're going to have some progress here. All right, let's get to the main event. It's the Coke 600 this weekend. Now, historically, the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte has often featured unique paint schemes, one-off paint schemes, many with a patriotic theme, patriotic flair, given that it's Memorial Day weekend. And this year is no different. We have some very creative paint schemes and some very unique paint schemes to look at. So that's what we're going to do here today. Just just, just, just gonna hang out and look at some paint schemes and talk about what we like and dislike about them. Quick disclaimer, I did as much research as I possibly could, so I believe I found every single patriotic scheme. There might be one I missed somewhere, and obviously we still have a couple days before the race, so another one could be announced that I, I'm not aware of, that I haven't seen yet. Uh, but we have a good amount to look at here, and this is, I think, all of them that have been announced so far. So uh, if, I, if I'm missing one, uh, that's, I'm sorry. I dug literally everywhere I possibly could to find these things, and we got a lot of good ones, so I think you guys won't be disappointed. Going in no particular order, let's start with Ryan Newman's number six, Oscar Mayer patriotic car. Now for all these, I'm gonna give you guys one thing I like and one thing I dislike about each of these paint schemes, and then at the end I'll tell you guys my favorite. Uh, so starting with this Ryan Newman one, I like that it's bright. <laughs> I actually really do like the back half of this car where it's red with the stars and everything. Like that's kind of cool, that's kind of fun. Uh, but other than that, the red morphing into the orange, it's a little off for me. I really like these Oscar Mayer cars a lot, actually, so ov overall, I actually really like this paint scheme, but I'm not a huge fan of the orange and the red. They don't really match. It feels like it's kind of a, a, a light orange with a deep red, and that just doesn't work for me. But either way, this is still a very recognizable paint scheme, so you get points for being recognizable, at least in my book. Let's look at the other Roush car, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now, this one I almost really like. The side of this car with the red front morphing into the blue matches better than what Ryan Newman's was trying to do, so I really like that. I like the little kind of stars and stripey sort of design sort of in there, kind of hidden beneath the surface, but the problem with this car is the hood. The hood doesn't match 
the rest of it at all. It's white, I get it, okay, fine. You know, America's red, white, and blue, I gotcha. Uh, but the Fast and All colors on the, on the Fast and All logo aren't even the same blue as what's on the rest of the car. At least it doesn't look like from this rendering. Obviously, this is just a rendering. But the Fast and All blue does not match the blue in the rear of the car, so that's a little weird to me. And then as much as I love seeing DeWalt back on the hood of the 17 car, as surprising and as fun as that is for me as a Matt Kenseth fan, it doesn't go with this paint scheme. I don't know why they had to put the DeWalt logo on this paint scheme, why not another fast and all paint scheme? Maybe it'll look a lot better. But for this one, with everything else being red, white, and different types of blue, throwing the little yellow logo there kind of by itself on the hood doesn't work. So one thing I don't like about this car is the way the hood does not match the rest of this paint scheme. One thing I do like, like I said, is the sides of this car. The red and blue looks great. If they kind of converted that over to the hood as well and maybe made the fast and all logo white on top of like a blue hood, I would really like this car. It'd be outstanding. But as it is, Eh, it's okay. Martin Truex Jr. I like this one a lot. He actually ran this one at the uh, at the All Star Race last weekend, so we're seeing it uh, twice in a row. But I like this one a lot, so I don't have a problem with it. My favorite thing about this car, and it might be really subtle and unnoticeable for most of you guys, is the way they put those three stars there next to the 19. I like that they're just right there, kind of in like a semicircle. That just looks really cool. Kind of like how Richard Petty has that little swoop next to his number usually, next to the 43, usually a swoop. I like the little stars right there. I don't know why. It's like, it looks kind of like the Pittsburgh Steelers logo, which I'm not a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, but you know how they kind of have like the little, they're not stars, but the little doodads right there. The, the doodads, yes, that's my analysis. The doodads. I love the doodads on this car. It's hard for me to say what I don't like about this car. Maybe it's just the way the Bass Pro Shops logo doesn't really match the red, white, and blue. But I don't know, I can't really take points away from that. I mean, they're working with what they got. I mean, I, I've never seen them change the color of the Bass Pro Shops logo, you know, before. So, I don't know. This is a pretty good one. It's hard for me to come up with anything too negative to say. Mm, I like this one a lot, too. Austin Dillon with the Coca-Cola Zero Chevrolet. I like this paint scheme, too. The Coca-Cola cars, and I think we have another one later on, uh, always impress me. What I really like about this car is the waves on the side, and I like that they're not just red. I like that you got that little bit of white in there as well, mix things up. I like that a ton about this paint scheme. God, again, it's hard for me to think of anything I don't like. The fact that they left most of the side of this thing black, so you still have the number three on black. That's really, you know, that's good. I like NASCAR fans like the three on black. Maybe the hood, I would have gone with a slightly different design. I don't know if I like that rounded kind of thing that the red on the hood is. I don't know if I like the way it's rounded like that as much. Maybe they could have played with that, maybe had some more fun there. I don't know, this, but this scheme, I like it a lot. For a black and red car, I'm not usually a fan of the kind of darker tone cars. I usually like bright, crazy looking cars because I'm a little child, I guess. Uh, but no, this red and black actually looks fantastic. It's got a little bit of an homage to the old Dale Earnhardt days. It's got, you know, Coca-Cola doing its thing, Coke Zero colors perfectly, and it's a fun design. I like this one a lot. Eric Almarola, this is the best picture I could find. Uh, they just had a rendering and it was like a video. A lot of these teams did their paint scheme reveals hidden within videos, which I'm not a huge fan of. I wish they would just show us a nice picture, rendering, photo, whatever you want it to be, of the paint scheme and not hide it within these three minute videos. But that being said, uh, this one does look pretty cool, at least from the side view. Similar, I think, to last year's. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think his looks similar uh, to this. Um, but this one looks nice, I like it a lot. Uh, the Smithfield black, but still with the red, white, and blue. I like the streak stars and stuff. I know, uh, I think a couple Hendrick cars did something like this last year. I know one of the Roush cars did like something like this last year. So I like that a lot. Larson's car did this too. Last year I'm talking about, I like the red diagonal, red and blue diagonal streaks. Looks good, looks, it's a good car. One thing I like about this is the streaks. The only thing I don't really like about this is that I guess it's the same as last year and the black on the hood it's still kind of, I know it's Smithfield, gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta stay on brand, but it, I don't know, it doesn't really match. It looks like two different paint schemes are clashing here. Here's another one that's just a rendering, but it's William Byron's Liberty University. When your name is Liberty University, you gotta have a good patriotic scheme. And this one's not bad. One thing I really like, I like these little stripes along the, the, the quarter panel on the bumper here. That's unique, don't see that all the time. That's pretty cool. Uh, I also like on the front, the Liberty University logo it has red, white, and blue stars and stripes stuff in the logo itself, that's neat. If I had to say something I don't like about it, honestly, it's probably I'm just not a big fan of the Liberty University navy and like dark red colors. I don't know, I guess, I don't hate them. Like, it's unique to Liberty University, so I can't hate on it too bad, but I, I don't know, it just doesn't really do it for me. It's not my color palette of choice. Yeah, I sound like a complete moron. Okay, here's Kyle Busch, same paint scheme we see pretty much every year. They did a cool thing for this one. Uh, I'm trying to remember the full story. I believe the soldier they're honoring, every driver is honoring a fallen soldier on the windshield of their cars. I believe this is their family, if I'm not mistaken, that they invited out to the paint scheme reveal. So that's a very cool thing, but that being said, this is the same M&M's paint scheme we've seen pretty much every patriotic race ever. So I like it. I'm never going to not like this M&M's paint scheme, but uh, are they ever going to change it up just a little bit? 
Just a little bit. I mean, maybe the red M&M is in a different side now than it was last year, but this looks exactly the same. Joey Logano's 22 car. I like this one too. A lot of people on Twitter I saw were kind of, you know, hit or miss on this one. I really like the focus on red here. You know, it's patriotic red, white, and blue. Focus on the red with the yellow highlights, yellow accents. I like this one a lot. Uh, thing I like most is the way the red works. The red is dominating with the yellow, kind of the yellow number, the yellow spoiler. I like the yellow spoiler, actually. That's really cool. It reminds me back in the day when, uh, during the chase era with sprint and everything, where uh, the chase qualifiers would have yellow spoilers spoilers and yellow splitters. That's kind of what this reminds me of. So I really like that. The only thing I don't like about this car necessarily is the fact that while there are some differences, they still do have the same kind of similar paint scheme that we usually see on the Penske cars with the streaks on the side and everything. And, you know, I wish they'd do away with that. I understand it's it's iconic, I guess, to Penske, but they've, they've experimented. Like with Brad Keselowski car, they, they changed it a couple times this year. They did something different. I wish they'd start changing it with Logano's car too. Just, just I don't know. On the plus side, if I'm a Lugano fan and I bought a t-shirt, say, in like 2013 or 2014, I could probably still wear that t-shirt today because the paint scheme looks almost identical. This image quality is garbage because this is another one where they showed it off in a video and this was the best screen grab I could find, uh, but this is this is an interesting paint scheme as well. Michael McDowell 34 car really going the military route with this one, dark camo colors. I know the lighting here sucks. I know this isn't the greatest image, but you can still kind of get an idea of what this paint scheme looks like. Uh, I really like it. I like that it's going the dark route with the uh, with the camouflage look and everything. Um, I'm not a big fan of, you know, I don't, I'm just not a big fan of camo colored stuff in general. I don't know. I mean, it, it's cool. It's unique. It's got its own style and everything, but it's not really, I, like, I don't wear camo colored, colored clothing or anything that often, so it's not super appealing to me, but I actually really like this. For a Memorial Day race especially, I really like this. If nothing else, it's on theme. Uh, speaking of theme, look at Matt Tiff. This is another really bad image, but this is like the best one I could find digging around for stuff. Uh, but here you go. You got a couple images here. Basically just looks like an American flag on a race car. We've seen stuff kind of like this before, but I really like the look of it. Uh, it's kind of simple. 32 for Corey LaJoy. Not too bad. Simple. Base white, which is probably the thing I don't like. I'm not a big fan of base white cars. There's some that do it really well, but this one, I don't know, it's, it's okay. The red and blue kind of stripes on the side of this thing are different, and I actually do kind of like the way they look. Um, so that's not bad. This is not a horrible car either. And speaking of camo, we have kind of the opposite here from a Michael McDowell's car who went with the more dark route. Jimmy Johnson. This is something right here. When I first saw this, I thought, wow, that's a really interesting paint scheme. I wasn't sure if I liked it, though. But upon second, third, fourth glances, it's grown on me quite a bit. Again, I'm not a huge, like, camo person. And at the end of the day, if you look at this car from far away, it kind of just looks like a beige Oldsmobile out there. Like, I don't know. So it's not a particularly colorful car, but I like the camo look on this one. It's unique. Like I said, you haven't seen anything... We haven't seen anything quite like this as far as I can remember, uh, so I like it a lot. The Ally logo and the 48 being white, I'm not sure. I mean, let me just try this out. What would happen if we made it in yellow like the rest of the season? Ah, uh, maybe that's not better. That might not be better. I can't tell. Either way, it's interesting. I, I like this car for the most part. The positives and the negatives are both with the camo in my opinion. I'm really... I like it, and I also don't like the beige, but I don't know. It, it looks great. I wonder what this car would have looked like if, instead of kind of the beige, brown, tan base, they went with a more dark green, kind of like a McDowell's car, and then still did this little kind of glitchy-looking camo pattern. That would might have been cooler, but uh, I don't know. This is not a bad car. It looks good. Coca-Cola cars, this is what I'm saying. They are on it this year. Daniel Suarez, again, another one they just showed in like a, a GIF practically, so I had to screen grab just a side view of the car here, but just from the side, I like the white kind of stripe going down the side, very Coca-Cola, very on brand for Coca-Cola, who of course is sponsoring this race, that's why they got a couple cars in the field. Uh, I like this one a ton, I like bright, bold red cars, and this one is doing it uh, perfectly, so applaud this one, good job, Coke and Suarez, don't know why I'm applauding Suarez, he, I guarantee you he did not design this car, but I'm excited that he's driving it. Nearing the end of our journey, here's Matt DiBenedetto, uh, another kind of dark green, kind of going with that military, going with the camo look. Not quite, though. Not the way Jimmy is and not the way McDowell is. Uh, this one's okay. Not a fan of the, like, green checkmark looking things on the side. I don't know. I'm just not a, that doesn't really look appealing to me. I'm not a huge fan of that. However, I do like, as you can kind of see on the side view and the top view, that, like, gray pattern that they have going on up there. Uh, that looks neat. I do like that. I don't know if I would have wanted that on the whole race car. I think they definitely needed some color. I'm just not a huge fan of the green that they chose. Uh, but this one's not too bad. This one's a sneaky one, on my, in my opinion. And 
last but certainly not least, one that was only revealed, I think, yesterday. Uh, this one caught me by surprise as well. I like this one. Alex Bowman, Nationwide. Look at this thing. It's very blue. We've seen a lot of red cards. We've seen a lot of camo colored cards. We've seen some white, red, white, and blue. But here's one that's just true blue, and it is blue to the fullest. Obviously, this is just a rendering, but this is sharp. This one's looking good. I like how the hood is typical nationwide blue and then it fades into a more kind of murky navy color. And then on the side, you can see kind of the, the silhouette of the American flag. That's not the right word, not the silhouette, just kind of like the, the, the outline of the American flag. I'm really bad at describing things today, but that's super awesome. The top with the red outline on the 88 and everything. This is a good one. It, this is making it hard for me to pick a favorite because this one caught me by surprise. I didn't expect this one to look this awesome. I'm excited to see what it looks like in real life, like not on, not in a rendering, actually on the racetrack because maybe it'll look better, maybe it'll look worse. Uh, but this rendering has me excited for Sunday night. All right, guys, so those are all the paint schemes that have been revealed so far that I could find at least. To end this thing, I'm going to give you guys my favorite paint scheme of all the ones we just looked at as well as my least favorite paint scheme. Now, we'll start on the down note. We'll start with the bad news first. We'll start with my least favorite paint scheme. For that, I'm going to have to go with this Matt DiBenedetto Pro core safety car. I mean, I don't hate it. And like I said, I do like that pattern going down the top and on the side, but the green check mark with the yellow numbers, uh, I don't know. Just green and yellow, you know, I'm, I'm, I've never really been my colors. And unfortunately, this is not winning me over at all. Sorry, Matt Benedetto fans, just not a huge fan of this paint scheme. Let's move on to my favorite, though. A little happier here. Oh, this is a toss-up. The two Coca-Cola cars look awesome. Oh, Jimmy Johnson's car is starting to win me over a little bit, but again, I got to go with one I just showed you guys. Alex Bowman, the 88. Just I think what really sold this one for me was the American flag on the side. The fact that you can kind of see it faded in the background, that's really what won this one over for me. The blue is very pretty. Blue is great. The Camaro front end's great. The red trim on the 88 on, up top is outstanding. But the little American flag faded. I mean, call me a patriot, but that is what gets it for me. That's what really wins me over. So uh, I think there you go. Winners and losers right there. Alex Bowman, you win this year, my friend. Let me know in the comments, though, below which one of those paint schemes was your favorite, uh, which was your least favorite. Uh, what do you like about these paint schemes? Let me know down in the comments. I look forward to reading all of your responses. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Before I go, I want to let you guys in on a special giveaway that my friends at NASCAR Pole Position are doing with Forney Industries. They're a major metalworking company within motorsports, and so how fitting they are giving away, among other great things, a 124 scale NASCAR die cast. Cool stuff right there. I want to let you guys know. Check out the link down in the description to enter. Hopefully one of the, uh, a member of the Groovy Gang can come out and win this thing. Anyway, you guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. You can check out down by the description. You can see how you can get a cool t-shirt like the one I'm wearing myself. If you want to support the show, represent the show everywhere you go, you can check that out. Uh, remember, you have just a couple more days until May 25th to send me things to my P.O. box before I have to close that down. So take advantage of that while you still can. And, of course, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Michael Harrison, at G was the star, SelfishGifts.com, Mentally Defective, Cameron James, John Koblenz, Jason R. Long, Wesley Donaldson, Isaac Dennison, Mika Suzuki, iFantasyRace.com, TheRacingInsiders.com, and the rest of these awesome, just awesome Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Couldn't do this show without you. If you also want to become a supporter of the show, check out that top link down in the description. I greatly appreciate it. I'll be back with another episode probably Friday. I actually have some news left over from a few days ago that I'd like to talk about. Um, so we can do that. We'll probably do that later this week before the uh, Coke 600 on Sunday. Uh, but if I don't see you between now and then, hope you have a great rest of your week, everyone. And I'll see you very, very soon.